MP, look, it's great to have you. And we want to look at these, uh, these laws that are coming in to the Rainbow Cup. Um, really interesting. Uh, they're going to take a little bit to get you getting used to, a little bit of explaining as well. Uh, the first one is about red cards, and it's a replacement for a red card after 20 minutes. So basically, the card of player must be removed from the pitch, and after 20 minutes, the team can replace the player with one of their nominated substitutes. Uh, the player given the red card cannot return to the pitch. So basically, instead of getting a red card and the opposition being down to 14 men for the remainder of the game, you get a chance to get back in and, and, and rescue the match. Um, your thoughts on that, JP? Yeah, well, it's always really difficult because I'm, look, my job is to be a referee and it's not really to have an opinion outside of that. But what I can give you is the balance of, of how people feel about it. So some people feel that a red card is a red card and we need to change the way players behave. We need to change their actions. Um, we need to make the game safer and safer and safer. So we want to encourage what you've seen lately, which is some harsher sanctions. And the teams have all agreed that and that's been communicated widely. The other side of the coin is people saying, well, some of these red cards, they're not for real big incidents and perhaps there should be a little bit of leeway for because we're not getting the out and out thuggery we used to get maybe back in the day whenever whenever you think that's appropriate going back in the game so it, it really is a, um, a two-sided coin this this ha this has been tried in it's a, in in the league over here it's in the league down in um, the southern hemisphere it's in a couple of different leagues and they're just collating and gathering information my, my view on all these law changes our game has always had lots and lots of law amendments so it's just a chance for us to have a look at this, see if it works. And if it, if it genuinely doesn't work and players are still doing acts that we don't want to see in the game, they can just remove this law and go back to what it was. It's, it's just a chance for us to look at something different to see, if it, to see if it helps the overall product, makes the game better, keeps it as safe as it always should be, still changes actions. So how people feel is a two-sided coin. Clive Bowman would agree with you, JP. I reckon the red card thing is very bad. Player safety. Uh, you could send out a, a thug to clobber the opposition's best player and have him replaced after 20 minutes. Red card oh. is a red card. If you don't want to get sent off, don't commit foul play, he says. I, I hate that argument because it's not true. The players don't. That's not how they think. They don't go out to injure players to take them off the field. And, and it's unlikely that a player would be worried and threatened by that. What, where I, I totally agree is there still should be a red card for foul play and thuggery that we were just talking about. But I'd like to see this option, maybe it's an orange card or whatever, of when it's a, an accidental or a reckless bit of play, it doesn't affect the whole team. You punish the player. No player wants to be taken off. No player wants to come away from the field. They can still be banned after the game, but don't affect it for the 80,000 people that paid good money by losing someone to an accident in the first minute. Still punish the player, but don't punish everyone else. Theo Campbell makes an interesting point, Oz, and I think it's about using a red card to teach players to change the behaviour. And he said, you know, it's diabolical because it unpicks all the hard work rugby, World Rugby have done to lower the tackle light with serious punishments. Coaches won't be as inclined to sort it out in training without team punishment. I think 20 minutes is still, you know, down it to is, 40 yeah. minutes. Still, they still you know. will, yeah. I promise you. Look how hard teams are trying to get their penalty counts down at the moment. The yellow card's down for, they're, they're trying, because they know how important it is to be for, for that, that amount of time in a game. Yeah. Well, he just answered for He said us. it. Yeah, yeah. so well, I, don't, okay. I don't need to add it. I thought you'd been carded. I thought you were on yeah, your own. 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, let's, look, <laughs> let's look at the second one here. Um, and this is the captain's challenge. Um, and I guess it's picking up JP and a lot of other sports. We see it out there in cricket. And hey, look, it's good TV. Each team is allowed one challenge during the match. This can be used for try scoring and foul incidents. Only captains must reference specific incidents or infringements. And footage must be clear and obvious for a challenge to be upheld. And then from the 75th minute of the challenge hasn't already been lost, a challenge can be used to check any whistle decision. Now, they got to, I think, put in the, the call or whatever, 10 seconds after the whistle is blown, JP. How does it work on a practical level? Yeah, I went off to uh, Bermuda on another terrible trip and did the World Series 10s there. And, and we used this. And it, it was really interesting, really good fun to use and, and made a kind of made for drama. Um, there's two things around the 10 seconds thing. You've got to be careful with that because you have a runaway try and the referees run 80 metres with the player or whatever it is. And the captain's a tight head prop back on the other goal line. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to do a sprint. So there has to be a sort of uh, recognition around that. It kind of has to be within the immediacy. So it'll be up to leagues to figure out the actual, the, the bits and pieces of that. But what we did find was uh, two things. One, 
uh, and it's probably good for a narcissistic lunatic like I am, you get to stand in front of the camera and pontificate about what you saw on this challenge and decide and be judge, jury and executioner in a way. Um, but what it, it does do, on the other hand, is it takes away frustrations from teams that feel they were hard done by in a certain situation. The the unintended consequence is sometimes teams might use it as a, as a bit of a breather. So if you've conceded a... a a try or a, a situation and you want to challenge it just because you want two minutes to get your breath back before you play the last five minutes because you're still two points up. So there is a sort of gamesmanship around it. But for drama value, World Series 10, of course, it was very different, but it, it definitely it brings the referee more into play, if you can believe that the way the games are at the moment. But it's um, it's certainly entertaining. It's certainly good fun. Bermuda, eh? you must miss the AJ Bell on a Friday night in the rain, do you? Tough on you. Um, Cody Taylor, uh, he said he was incorrectly denied a captain's challenge by the ref Paul Williams. Um, now, the ref apologised to the, the, the All Black, you know, but yeah. it's about the communication, which is really hard mid-game to kind of word it correctly because it, it, it can't be a general complaint. It has to be very, very specific and the footage has got to back it up. It's tough. I think there's pros and cons with it. I mean, we're not seeing it implemented properly yet, obviously, but the pros for me are it will stop everyone else, the other 14, constantly shouting at the ref saying, look at that, look at this, look at the other. That should stop, which would be a good thing. And then the, the cons for me are, I was never really for taking the autonomy away from the referee. I was never really for TMO's work, and I thought eventually it would erode the value of the referee's whistle. And I think we're seeing that. We've seen a little bit, you know, we're, what, 12 years into the TMO, and still it's not working perfectly. It's still difficult. And you don't want to make the game too sterile. You want to have a couple of occasions where refs get it wrong, TV pundits get it wrong, players get it wrong, because it, t it gives you conversation points. And I think you've got to be very careful not to sterilise the game too much. And uh, we're in danger. If you take the power away from the referees, then we all become arbitrators. Um, I like this next one. Um, well, just, just, sorry, oh, sorry. just very quick on that. JP once said to us that when... When the TMO came in, you almost felt like you had to go because if you'd made a mistake before the TMO, you didn't bother going back because there's nothing you could do about it. Now, if you were even 5% not sure, you'd have to go and check it. So do you think we'll now go back to less reviews because the onus goes on the captain to check it? Yeah, it, it's both ways. Actually, in the league here, we're, we, in, in the games, we don't have a TMO. And it's, it's really good to referee with a TMO because there's a, an agreement um, around what's happening. I made a mistake in my game where there could have been or maybe not a try. I don't know if it was a double movement. Don't know if he grounded it. I decided to go back for a penalty. The guy was sure he scored, but everybody just accepted the decision for what it was. I'm, I'm, it's not about whether it's right or wrong. It was I was doing my best to make the best decision I can. Maybe that was rubbish, but there's an acceptance in my fallibility. With the TMO, it, it definitely as Ben, you're saying correctly, it, it puts an internal pressure that I never felt before I had to deal with TMOs. So it, it it works both ways, but I can also now put the pressure back on the captain. If he feels wrong, he can come to me. So I like that symbiotic relationship with the captain. Yeah, uh, let's look at good, this. Good third point, one. that actually. Well, actually, yeah. it's a really good point. It might get rid of the TMO as much. Yeah, yeah, good. Anything that speeds the game along, we like. Um, I like this one. This is the goal line dropout. Uh, this is when a ball's held up over that. We're seeing so much of this now, obviously. Players are really training for this to try and hold up the opposition, the attack over the line. But for a held up ball over the line, knock-ons in the in-goal areas or when the ball is grounded by a defending player in the in-goal area after a kick-through, the defending team will take a drop-out from anywhere on the goal line. The drop-out must be taken on or behind the goal line and it must occur without delay. It must go at least five metres. Uh, it's a good one, this, JP. Um, it, it just sh it's, it's a huge shift, isn't it, this? It's a massive shift. Yeah, this, I was on a, um, a coach's call and I think what was really interesting was talking to him about why would you not, when you're on the goal line, have two or three of your larger forwards target the ball carrier and drag him over the goal line or go with him and just make sure you, you, you target the ball on the tackle. Um, dangerous tactic, but you've seen teams like Exeter, you know, Bath, you know, teams around the goal line are, are super at it. And it's, I don't know, I'd love to know what the percentage return is on picking goals around the goal line, because it's invariably a penalty for hands beyond the goal line or being slightly offside. It's very hard to get out there without conceding um, either points or a line out drive ball after it or an actual try. Actually, you spotted something earlier and you said, oh, that'd be quite interesting for that change. Yeah, I think in the Bath game earlier, we saw them take a quick tap penalty. And then when you're in this scenario, I think it's really dangerous for players. If you're the ball carrier, someone's coming out to you at full tilt and diving below your legs. You know, that's got chance of injuries. We've seen loads of players get 
um, HIA is off the back of it. But in this scenario, all you have to do, and you know, the negative of it is, you've got three guys next to each other, almost like a mattress, and you concede the tackle, fall on your back, and you're held up, and the opportunity to drive over is gone. Now, I think if that becomes the norm, then sides really won't try that pick and go. They'll try and go wide. They'll try and look at space. So, it, you know, it's got, we've, we've got to see what happens with it, really. I would like to see a couple of dropouts. I think there'll the be too, too high a reward for the defending team. Yeah, I'd like to see too, yeah. maybe try a, a scrum further out, 10 metres out on the 22, something like that. But so you're still in prime attacking position, not back on your own half, on, on the halfway line. Yeah. Uh, JP, thanks for joining us. What's your, what's your plan now? You're over there for the season? Uh, yeah, I'm going golfing this afternoon. Don't tell my wife. And then uh, we're reviewing back into a game for next week. And I'm very blessed. I'm, I've got another game here in Atlanta. So there's two teams here. So I Toronto this week and I'm Atlanta uh, next week. So doing Atlanta versus New Orleans. I was just looking at some of the names as well there. I mean, you got Chris Robshaw there, Ben Foden, of course, Frank Halley there. You got, uh, my word, there's a few Aussies there as well. I mean, it's, 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 it's really picking up a pace, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. I, I, I think it's it's where it started from a couple of years ago to where it is now it's it's light years difference they're so positive in the play over here it's really that bit's really refreshing they can be a bit dramatic in the way they are but culturally it's a bit different and i'm pretty dramatic anyway so it all all fits in nicely you know it's really really enjoyable well, look, thanks so much for joining. You've gone 10 minutes without a hamburger there. You must be absolutely starving, so uh, I'll let you get back to that. Uh, Doyler, thanks very much. We'll see you around here soon. 